Hello. It's great to see you here, having completed the setup, and ready to go. In this section we will discuss the basics of R such as data types, variables, operators and its syntax. So let's get ready to dive into the world of R programming. Imagine yourself going to a library. What if all the books in the library were kept together in a random order? Wouldn't that create a mess when looking for a particular book? So to solve this issue, the librarians have created different sections based on types of books. For example, there would be a section for fiction, another for history, one for programming etc. Why are we saying this? This is because, just like in the library, R has sorted the entire data based on five different types, named double, integer, character, logical, complex. Let's use an example to clarify exactly what these data types represent. Imagine an Excel file with data of students such as name, age, and percentage scored. Now relating this to R programming, name would be a character, age would be an integer and percentage would be double type. Sounds simple right? Let's look at each of the data types in detail. Any number which is whole or a fraction, is a double type. Double is the default data type for numbers in R so any number entered will be stored as a double by default. Using the literal math definition, an integer is nothing but a whole number, no fractions or decimal point. Wondering what that L is doing everywhere after a number? The important thing to note about integers in R is that all integers are denoted by L after the number. This is what distinguishes them from a double. Now here is a question, when do we use a double and when do we use an integer? Any guesses? Yes. You are absolutely right. Each has its own purpose. For example, for storing fractions or decimal numbers like the percentage scored by a student, we will use a double but for storing the headcount of students in a classroom we would use an integer as it will always be a whole number. Sound simple, right? Let's have a quick quiz to understand things better. Any data stored inside quotes are of a character type. It can be a person's name, address, 
organization's name etc. Simple, isn't it? Let's go ahead with our next data type, logical. Logical is nothing but true or false. A logical data type can be denoted by either true or t and false or f. Pretty straightforward, isn't it? Remember this is a conditional data type i.e. it can either be true or it can be false. It can never be both. As per the definition we learned in high school, complex numbers are numbers which have a combination of real plus imaginary numbers. R has the capability to store complex numbers as well. That, let us now have a quick quiz on the data types we learned about above. Hope you now have a good grasp on the functional knowledge of data types. Our next topic is variable declaration, but before that, let's have a quick look at some of the key points for this topic. 1. Both doubles and integers fall into the numeric category. 2. Max limit of an integer is 2 billion, 2 times 10 to the power of 9. Dot. 3. If we store a fraction value inside an integer, R will automatically store the value as a double to avoid any data loss. Now that we have a strong grasp about the nature of data types, let's see how we can define and use those. Let's take the library example again. Imagine going to a library to search for a book in the encyclopedia category. Once you reach the library, you may find many books in the encyclopedia category. How would you find the book which you need? It's quite simple, each book has a unique name which distinguishes it from the others. You search for what you need and take it to the checkout counter. In our programming, we use the same concept for distinguishing data. Here, we store data using different names which are known as variables. So what is a variable? Variables are random names assigned to data so as to keep the record of that data in the system. In real life, it is similar to the way we distinguish different things like trees, buses, planes etc. in our mind. Sounds good? Let's start by defining a variable and assigning some data into it. The concept here is, to store the data inside a name so we can use it later for any operations. From the image, we can see that we have three factors here, name underscore of underscore variable, operator and the value. Let's have a look at these one by one. 1. Name underscore of underscore variable can be any name which we want to give. Ideally we should put a name which makes sense with the data. Example, if we need to store the name of a country, we would name the variable as country underscore name. This is good practice when we want to fetch data. 2. Operators are special characters which are used to define a variable. Those are equals, less than, and, greater than we will learn about them in detail in one of our further topics, operators in R. 3. Value is the data that needs to be stored. Let's understand this using an example. Assume we need to store the name of a student inside a variable name. We can use the above three ways to do the same. Let's have a quiz to get a better understanding of variable declaration. Now that we have understood how to define a variable, let us have a quick look about how we can name them. Imagine a book whose name starts with an exclamation mark. How would we call it? Underscore encyclopedia? 
Isn't that a bit difficult or weird to pronounce? So, we follow some standard ways of naming a book so that it will help everyone to pronounce it properly. Similarly, we use some standards in our programming for naming a variable so that the code is readable even if someone else looks at it. These standards are known as naming conventions. Let's take some examples to clarify which are valid and invalid names. From the above example, we can see that dot, and underscore, underscore, are the only special characters which are allowed inside a variable name. All others will lead to an error dot from the above example, we can see that dot, and underscore, underscore, are the only special characters which are allowed inside a variable name. All others will lead to an error. A name can only start with a letter of the alphabet or a dot, all others lead to an error. Also, numbers are allowed anywhere except at the start of the name, and after a dot at the start. Now that we are confident about variables and their naming conventions, let's have a quick quiz. That was wonderful. We have almost completed our section on the basics of our programming with just one topic left. Hope you are feeling more confident about R after learning from each and every slide. Now let's jump into the final topic for this section, which is operators in R programming. As we know, R is a statistical tool. But did you know it can perform arithmetic operations as well? Yes. R is a very powerful tool. It can perform huge arithmetical operations, compare two different values, as well as performing logic operations. Let's go ahead and see the power of R. Operators are nothing but special characters or symbols which are used to perform different operations. For example, plus plus symbol is used for addition. On a high level, operators in our programming are categorized into five different categories namely Arithmetic operators Relational operators Logical operators Assignment operators Special operators Each has their own unique feature. Let's look at them one by one. For all arithmetic operations such as addition, subtraction, division, and multiplication, we use arithmetic operators. We use addition, plus, subtraction, dash, division, slash, multiplication, exponential, caret. Let's go through an easy example to understand this better.
the above operations C less than, A plus B will add the value of A and B, and will store it in C. So when we check the value of C, it would be 30. This is the power of our programming. It is efficiently using arithmetic as well as assignment operators at the same time. As the name suggests, it shows the relation between two values. This would be shown in Boolean form i.e. true or false. We have six different relational operators namely less than, greater than, greater than, equal to, equals equals, not equal to, exclamation mark equals, less than equal to, less than equals, greater than equal to, greater than equals. Let's go through an easy example to understand this better. Since it is not, the answer it displays is false. Let's take an example of a less than b. In this scenario, R checks if the value of a is less than the value of b. Logical operator applies the logical conditions such as and, and, or, vertical bar, and not and returns the value as a boolean. Since this is something new, we will take this one by one. AND, AND, AND operator means checking both the values. If any one of them is false, it will return as false. OR, vertical bar, OR operator means checking either one of the values. If any one of them is true, it will return as true. Not, not operator would just return the opposite of the value. If the value is true, it will return false and vice versa. Let's work through an example to understand this. In the case of an operation, both A and B must be non zero. Hence, the output is false. In case of vertical bar operation, only one should be non-zero. Hence the output is true. In case of exclamation mark operation, the output will be the opposite of its value. Hence the output is false. As the name suggests, assignment operators are used to assign values to variables. We have been using this the whole time when assigning values to A or B in the above examples. So these are categorized in two sections based on location of variable i.e. leftward assignment and rightward assignment. If the variable name is on the left-hand side, then it is leftward assignment whereas if the variable name is on the right-hand side, then it's rightward assignment. Let's see the below example to understand this better. You will note here. We can use equals operator for leftward assignment but not for rightward assignment. This is to find an R to avoid ambiguity. These are specific operators defined for miscellaneous functions such as creating sequence, searching value in vectors, percent any percent, etc. We will discuss these operators as we progress in the course. Now, Let's take a quiz to discover how familiar we are with this topic.
Finally, the section on basics of R has come to an end. Hope you now have a firm grasp on the basics of R programming. Let's have a quick revision on what we have done up to now. First we learned the different types of data in R which are double, integer, character, boolean, and complex. Then the remaining data types were explored with some examples. We then moved to variable declaration where we saw some different techniques used to define a variable and learned about the naming conventions. Then we individually studied different operators in R which are arithmetic operators, relational operators, logical operators, assignment operators and special operators as well as their scope for faster computation. Hope you had a blast learning the basics of R. We will see you in our next topic functions and packages in R.